Hey everybody, this is Dan once again with another Git tutorial video. Uh, today I'm going to talk about how to squash commits using Git Interactive Rebase. Um, so I got a new background here. This is my pup Willow. Uh, I got a new mic, so uh, hopefully it'll sound a little bit better. Let's go ahead and get started. So today we're going to use the Hello World repo that doesn't really have much going on in it. Um, it's just got a box class and you run hello and the box class reports the members that it has. So the first thing that I want to do here is simulate some type of development on what we call a topic branch. And a topic branch is really just a branch of development that is designed to implement a specific feature and it's part of a lot of Git workflows so you may hear that term a lot and so if I look at my branch right now you'll notice that I've created a new branch called sphere at the point of the master branch and the purpose of this is to develop some sphere like capability and we're just gonna simply do some uh, some basic stuff with respect to coding because really the purpose of this video is to show you the the squashing commit mechanism. So I've done a little prep work and I have a stash that has some development here. So if I do git stash pop, we will see that I have a new sphere class, um, some changes to the make file and the main file, hello cpp, to use it. So now if I do a make and I run the file at the end, we'll see, oh, we have one instance of a sphere. Um, so what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to go ahead and commit this and this is going to simulate sort of the idea of you as a developer create some content it's not complete yet but you want to commit it for various reasons uh, and a lot of those reasons I mean the biggest reason is so that you can get back to it at some point in Git it's it's really easy to make commits and it lets you get back to known good or bad states, in this case a good state. So let's go ahead and commit this. Uh, added uh, sphere class not fully implemented. Okay, so we make this commit and if we do git log at the top we will see the commit we just made, right? So git status, oops, git status will show that we are clean now and let's just take a look at the sphere file real quick. We're gonna make two more commits and I'm just going to do it quickly. Uh, let's open the header file and let's just add something, a character pointer to name just to make an addition. So. Um, You'll notice that each, each commit here, I actually do a make and I do a run because I care as a developer whether or not a particular commit is a good state. And it's a good idea that if you can to have commits at a good state, if that makes sense. Um, and so the squashing mechanism, which I'm about to show you, is pretty cool because if you have bad commits, in fact, let's go ahead and do that. I'm, I'm improvising here, so uh, bear with me. Let's say that we have, um, let's do this. Let's make it not compile, right? And let's pretend, like if I do make now, it's not gonna compile, right? So let's go ahead and pretend that I didn't see this error, I didn't do a make, and I went ahead and I committed this change. Git add you in the index, git commit, and I will write an error message, added name to sphere class, okay? Okay, so now in our git log, we have two commits deep of development, this first one and the one we just made, which has the bad content, right? So like I did before, if I do make, it, it's not building. So let's pretend that as a developer, oh, I just noticed this, I made a bad commit, 
well, that's no good. What am I supposed to do about that? Well, one way to handle that, there's a number of ways in Git, but the interactive rebase can help you with that. So let's go ahead and uh, change the file so that it will compile. And we'll pretend that this is us going in and fixing it. Do git status now, we see the change, we do make, it builds, and it runs. So let's go ahead and add this change. We'll commit it and say fixed bad type on name in sphere class, right? Okay. So now our git log shows three commits, right? And we know that we made a bad commit right here. But in general, even if we didn't make a bad commit, let, let's say that we spent, you know, like two or three days working on this, um, this sphere class in our quote, actual development environment. And, you know, each one of these states is something that we cared about because we made a commit there. But as a feature, it would be more useful to others to actually squash the content of these, oops, <laughs> of these three commits, let me get back here, of these three commits into a single commit. Well, why, you might ask? Well, in this case, we know we have a bad commit here. Is someone else ever gonna really wanna check out to this point in history? The answer is probably not. And so, I mean, it, it's sort of subjective. So this isn't always a, the best thing to do, but I wanna show you how to do it. So. The way you do it is by using the git rebase command. And git rebase is probably the most intimidating git command, especially to read the man page. So let's, get, let's check it out. Forward port local commits to the updated upstream head. Oh yeah, that makes sense, right? So you can read this whole man page and your brain might explode. But one way to use rebase is with the dash i command Okay, so we have the three commits that we want to squash, and the way that we squash them is by using the git rebase uh, command with the interactive um, switch, which is dash i. So we just type git rebase dash i, and then the parameter it takes is a point in history you want to start your rebase from. So in this case, we want to squash the last three commits, so we will give it head till day three, which is the shortcut for um, the last three commits. So if I hit enter on this, we get a new editor. And this um, basically is letting us decide how we want to proceed in our interactive rebase. And down here, it shows you what your options are. So I'm not gonna go over all these options. Uh, the one we're gonna use today is squash. And so what you do is these are listed in most recent commit order. Right, just like the git log. So this is the most recent commit, this is the second commit that we know is bad, and this is the original commit that started the top of branch. So what we wanna do is keep pick on this commit and change these to squash. And when we write the file, it's gonna start the rebase. So here we go. Oh, I'm sorry, there's one more step. <laughs> this is the opportunity to edit what the final commit will look like. So by default, what's gonna happen is it's gonna just paste the three commit messages all in a row in order. So in this case, I'm gonna leave it like this, but this would be your opportunity to sort of reword the whole commit message as sort of a, a description of the feature, if it makes sense, um, which is sometimes better than just, you know, pasting in each one of the commit messages here, but I'm just gonna leave it like this for now. So you write this file and then the rebase will start. And in this case, it happened incredibly quickly. So it says successfully rebased and updated. And so what's cool about this is if you look at your Git log now, what we see is one commit. So all the content of those three commits was pushed into, you know, well, push is the wrong word, but consolidated into one commit, 2E1C. So the commits we made before don't exist on this branch anymore. Technically, they exist in your ref log, but uh, we don't need to talk about that for this video. So what this lets us do is consolidate our work, and this is a really, really good idea if you're comfortable with Git rebase. Um, 
to, to go ahead and do this on your feature branch before you share it with someone. And before is the key. You do not want to rebase commits that have been shared, whether they've been pulled between repos or pushed to a centralized uh, repository. If you've shared your commits, you probably don't want to rebase them. Um, and the reason is that can create merge conflicts and, and technically, I mean, the real reason is because git rebase actually rewrites history. So git rebase man page is pretty tough to swallow. Um, but if you go through it, it basically describes how you can rewrite history and change the way commits were. It's, it's, it's incredibly powerful. Um, and so this is just one application of, of how you might use Git rebase and frankly the most useful. And so it might, if you're new to Git, it might not be initially clear to you. Well, why do you care? Why would you rather have one commit than three commits? And it's, it's sort of difficult to describe. I mean, and until you've, you know, developed in a source code system for a long time and had to go through history and understand the the how a project grows you might not quite understand why it's a big deal and really it, it's not that big of a deal but the more you can make succinct commits uh, specific to a feature the uh, better your history is over the long uh, over the long term of your project basically so as an example, those three bad commits that we made, which we can peek at if we look at the git ref log. So these commits, uh, let's back. These three commits were the commits we made. Remember this commit we made, EE9, that was bad, meaning it wouldn't even build? Well, there's really no use for that in the history of the project, right? No one's ever gonna wanna go back and check out to a bad state, in fact, there are cases where if you need to track down a strange behavior in your project and you need to know, hey, what commit did this strange behavior start in? Well, you're gonna do a, what's called a git bisect. I'm gonna go over that in another video, which is pretty cool. But basically what happens is, if, if you imagine these are just random commits um, in, a, in the history of the project, basically you find a commit where something went wrong and you know, well, Typically, you discover it in recent history. So let's say, oh, we found a problem here. And we check out to an old state, like say here, and we say, oh, the problem isn't here. And so you can test for the problem by bisecting the tree, right? So if this state is good and that state is bad, then it'll test this state. And if this state is good, um, then it'll bisect the tree and it'll continue towards the good by doing a binary search. But What's important about that related to interactive rebasing is that if you have a commit and you bisect your tree and you have a bad commit that you know is bad, then if you ever have to go track down an unrelated behavior on that point in history, you're gonna have to go fix the problem of why it's broken unrelated to the problem you're trying to track down. Does that make sense? So you want your history to be as clean buildable and runnable as possible because you never know in the future when you're going to have to actually go back in time and try to track something down and if something's broken in that history it's going to be even harder so i just wanted to point that out because it's not initially clear especially to people new to git so i think this video is long enough we only really explored one command here and so to summarize if you want to squash your history you want to do a git rebase dash i and assuming that your commits are unshared and linear in your branch meaning you just made say you know we made three commits in a row if you make five commits in a row that's fine you make 20 that's fine so as an example if you made 20 and you want to rebase the last 20 in your linear history you would do it this way and then remember in the dialog that pops up uh, you want to put squash um, for all the commits below the top commit if you want to squash them all into a single commit. And then, of course, you have a chance to edit your commit message. So I think that's it for me today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.